Welcome to Drawfee, where we take your dumb ideas and make even dumber drawings. I'm Jacob. <laughs> I'm Tristmas. Tristan. Ooh. Ooh. I'm Creenmas. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got another one. I'm Jolly Jingle Julia. <laughs> That's really good. That's Perfect me. voice for that name. You sound like the lady who's been ringing the Salvation Army bell like <laughs> outside the store for 30 50 years. 50 years straight. <laughs> Please, it's so cold out here. I'm Can Jolly I come Jingle inside? Julia. <laughs> I'm Santa's little helper. <laughs> come on, give me, give me whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Give me whatever. Wait, can okay. I come back around and do one? I, I want to have a Christmas yep. name. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm Jacob the Reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you see had it. all that time. <laughs> Jacob was desperately looking around the room for something to be. <laughs> he couldn't find anything. I'm Jacob the Reindeer. It's canon now. Uh-huh. <laughs> On Jacob. On Nathan. Christmas, what are we doing today? Why don't you tell us? We are uh, doing a a sequel to a sequel. We've done Christmas cryptids, holiday folklore, characters. Uh, I'm not sure what the, whatever it sounds the zippiest in the the title for SEO is going to be what the title is. (laughs) Oh, yeah. But it's essentially holiday cryptids, holiday folklore. So we've done a bunch of these in the past, but it's going to be fun again. I'll give you the the name and some origins and some details of a uh, holiday folklore critter or person from around the world, and you will try to draw them. Okay? That no, sounds I... like a good time. That sounds like a video <laughs> that we have done before. I guess. Let's do it again. Nathan's not here because he is a Scrooge. Oh, Hates the call holidays. Out. Uh-huh. <laughs> Calling out Nathan. <laughs> so Scrooge I guess, McNathan. Uh-huh. Scrooge McNathan. So I guess, Karina, do you want to go first? All uh, right. Hit me. Okay. Karina, eh. your holiday folklore thing is the Yule Goat. Yeah. Yule Goat. Is it Digimon? <laughs> <laughs> That's Yule Goatmon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a difference. Yes. <laughs> Those of you who've uh, followed this uh, channel for a while might remember the Yule Lads. Of course. Uh, yeah. Of legend. Is this their mighty steed? Ki- kind of. Not, really? They're not really? It's not really related. Oh. Not oh. really related, to my oh. knowledge. <laughs> oh. It, they, uh, the Yule Goat does seem to sort of like track all the way back to Norse myth, where these goats were, uh, were mighty steeds of Thor. And uh, oh. every... Every morning, every evening, he would murder them and eat them, and oh, then in the morning they every would, evening, yeah, every evening, and then they would come back in the morning. And <laughs> wow, then, uh, pained existence. <laughs> yeah, it sucks to be the Yule Goat. <laughs> well, I mean, this is, be- <laughs> this is this is like the the Yule Goat has like four or five incarnations. Apparently, has a car incarnation every day. <laughs> <laughs> so once, uh, basically, I think it's either pagan or Christian, like, learned about this tradition or, or whatnot, they were like, hey, um, actually, that's satanic and demonic, and we don't like that anymore. So for a little while, the Yule Goat was like a scary creature that was said to roam the countryside and terrify Christians. Uh, <laughs> so they liked that better than... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's something to do with the hooves and stuff they're not really yeah. into. It's kind of... Well, it's yeah. like Satan. Yeah. Satan has the yeah. hooves. Yeah. yeah. Satan has the hooves. Yeah, Christians hate hooves. You can see like, uh, yeah, that in like Krampus still. Yeah. You're, yeah. I mean, you're drawing a yeah. dragon. I just want you to know. No, I, I <laughs> am not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working. I don't know what a goat looks like. I'm going to start over. You made me self-conscious. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I liked it. What does a goat look like? <laughs> Why did I think it looks like that? <laughs> This is, yeah, it this is a goat. Like, it's a goat. It looks like this. Yeah. yeah. There you oh, go. now we're firmly in goat territory. Here we go. God damn it. Just, what is a goat? Imagine a goat in Animal Crossing, you know? I only have cats on my island okay. and, <laughs> and, and Bo. <laughs> <laughs> just draw Bo. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Bo's close. <laughs> I like this goat, though. Yeah, this is good. I like this, this is a goat. a good goat. It's nice. I don't know what I was doing with that first goat. Now I feel foolish. So it's a goat that dies a lot and scares Christians. 
Uh huh. We do hate anything that reincarnates. That's not Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so eventually, the the Yule Goat kind of morphed again, and it became kind of a Santa Claus e figure. And people would uh, kind of dress up with like a goat face and like a lot of shawls and stuff and bring gifts to the kids, but it's still like very frightening. Okay. And all of the uh, imagery that I have seen around like maybe the early 1900s uh, of paintings of this Yule goat is a person obviously dressed up as a Yule goat uh, is presenting some gifts to children who are all terrified. <laughs> I've definitely seen pictures of this. Yes. It definitely sounds like a thing. They're super cool looking. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do love goat head on body scare children, <laughs> scare Christians. <laughs> Don't scare Thor am, though. Uh-uh. Am Satan mm-hmm, mm-hmm. killed by Thor. <laughs> Every day I wake up <laughs> and I'm killed by Thor. <laughs> and then I hit a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and some Christians are scared of me. Mm-hmm. Sucks to be you, bro. Oh, there's there's a uh, speaking of like repeated uh, injuries and tragedy there is yet another aspect to the yule goat that is current maybe maybe people have maybe the seen yule this. goat is so multifaceted it is uh <laughs> contains <laughs> legions for sure yeah. <laughs> so uh the yule goat is now uh these days kind of like an ornament or like a decoration it's uh mm-hmm. made of, it's a goat made of straw tied up with red ribbon and there's a giant one in sweden in a, in a place called uh Yevlev, Lev, Ye, Yevle, the Yevle, Yevle. goat and this this goat is huge. It's tall, and it's been around since the '60s. Every every year, the town of Yevle puts it in the town square, and almost every year, like more years than not, it is burned down to the ground. On wow. purpose. Wow. On purpose. People do this on purpose. By Thor. Is you it know, Thor? Question, question mark. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot prove that it is or is not Thor. Thor himself. <laughs> <laughs> this goat is very cool. Yeah, this is a chill goat. He's trying to like be cool, but <laughs> but he knows what's coming. <laughs> hey, stay cool, man. Maybe this year, if I'm if if people just like me a little bit more, I won't get burned to the ground <laughs> like last year. <laughs> so, like, if you go to the uh, like the wiki page, it's like it's got one of those like Excel spreadsheets of every year and what happened to the goat every year uh since the 60s and like one of them it's like it says survive or destroyed and it says how they're destroyed and it's like uh burned obviously uh kicked to pieces whoa <laughs> hit by a car um Amazing. one of them was um let's see uh vandals dressed as santa and the gingerbread man shot a f- flaming arrow at the goat <laughs> they they set up one year they set up uh webcams but th- uh they were like hacked and and given a ddos attack and what? then they burned it down <laughs> i am seeing so i i looked up this goat mm-hmm. and i i i image searched it because oh i wanted boy. to know what it looked You're like screen peeking i see I am screen peek. I'm not going to say anything, but I'm looking at a few of the titles of Mm -hmm. some of the articles, and this one is Fire Prone Christmas Goat Survives. (laughs) Good for him. Smaller gavel goat set on fire. Oh. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) There are like two goats. Like one of made one of I think is maybe like local high school students, and the other one's like the real goat. But usually, if one is destroyed, the other one is also destroyed. Yeah, this one says ill-fated Christmas goat survives, which is very funny. Uh, it has survived three years in a row, the last three years, wow. and which is the most that it has happened. It's never, it's never survived more than two years in a row before being burned. And they've like put ice all over it. Right now, they have like like two armed guard, two not armed guard, two guards and like a dog <laughs> uh, there twenty four seven. So, like, you're not supposed to destroy the goat. It's just mm. kind of its own thing now that yeah. people do. Yes. That's not, like, an official activity. It's illegal. It's illegal. It's illegal yes. to burn the goat. Yes. And That's they so do fun. It. They do it every time except the past three years <laughs> when the, the goats. Yeah, somehow. The goat's, like, guard retinue has become too powerful. <laughs> 
Do you think the goat will survive this year? I don't know. It's hard to say. The The wiki of last year says it had a double fence, 24-hour surveillance, two guards, uh, and a dog patrolling 24 hours a day. That seems like really tough. Yeah. yeah. I feel like because of COVID, people got a lot of time to think about how to get to this goat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I, I feel like they're I gonna get it. Feel like this is the year. It's it's been three years. So <laughs> then again, it's a lot of energy. It's a lot of energy yeah. that I don't know. Yeah, like twenty twenty has. No no disrespect to this tradition. I love it, but like it's just a goat. <laughs> it's just a straw goat. Well, there's got to be a reason, I feel, like that people are doing this. It's because like, they're maybe scared. If you let the goat live for too many <laughs> years, it continues to grow in power until it becomes unstoppable. Like you mm-hmm. have to kill it every year, kind of like you're, you know, farming your crops every That's year. That's why Thor exactly. did it. Season. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. If the goat lived for more than one day, <laughs> it would take, it would overtake Thor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I just saw burning the goat is illegal and the court of appeal for. Northern Norland states that the offense carries a three-month prison sentence for aggravated property damage. Wow. Wow. So the government really doesn't want you to burn this goat, and that makes me want to burn it more. But, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's not exactly like, but I I think of it like, oh, it's like buying a PS5. You don't need it. You Nobody (laughs) needs it. Yeah. You know, you don't need to do this, but it's been a tough year. We should buy the goat a PS5. Treat yeah. yourself, burn a goat. You burn know? the goat. Burn the goat this year. We all need it. It goes into the town square <laughs> in early December. So I think uh, as of this recording, and by the time, definitely by the time this gets posted up, it should be in the square. So um, there might be some some pics and whatnot. <laughs> Try to, it's been burned down before and they replaced it and then they burned down the replacement. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited to find out what happens to this goat this year. I'm invested in this goat now. Yeah. <laughs> but the the goat that you've drawn, Karina, is like my favorite D&D character, you know? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so friendly. He looks like a prince. You've completed a quest for the prince and he's giving you this little gift. Please don't burn me. Please don't pre- <laughs> Please don't press quick save and I mean, then burn I me guess, alive. <laughs> I guess he'd be more visibly worried about being burned to the ground. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's been a few years, and he's like, he knows that the yeah, time is he's coming. On thin ice. Yeah, <laughs> he's hoping to squeeze out one more year of not getting burned. But people are antsy. Let's draw some scared kids. Do you think that COVID will make it easier or harder to burn the goat? Again, maybe people got you know time to plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. all feral after this year. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe I'm projecting, but like I, I think. People have a lot of like <laughs> energy, <laughs> but you know. If I was this uh, this town or this city, I would do like Marge Simpson does when she's making a cake. She makes a special cake that Homer can ruin himself. They should make <laughs> a special goat that the town can ruin. Why do they not do that? Because I feel like people wouldn't destroy the one they're allowed to destroy. That defeats yeah, the purpose. That, that's, that yeah. ruins it. I remember at school there was this wall where you could like uh, graffiti up anything. You could tag or, or spray anything at school. And that seemed to, at the time at least, kind of tamp down a lot of the va- other vandalism going on at the school. So I wonder if like getting those willies out, you know? Yeah. People just want to watch something burn and then just celebrate it. If that was an official thing, would it be as exciting to burn down the forbidden goat? I want to like throw out a suggestion for mm-hmm. the people of this town on a, a way I think would be good to burn the goat. Mm-hmm. I think there's something with drones that we could do. <laughs> Just a like, drone with like a bucket of gasoline. <laughs> yeah, like a, or like a drone with like a flamethrower uh-huh. of some kind rigged up to it. So you could fly it right over the fence. The dog okay. can't do anything to stop that. Have it launch a firework into the goat. Yeah. Yeah. The one dog they have on patrol can't stop a drone. Are Swedish police armed? You know what do they? What do they got? I don't know. I know British police aren't really armed. They would have, like throw like a you know little club at them or something. Yeah, I think by the time they realize what's going on, it's going to be too late. So that's that's my suggestion. I'm throwing that in the ring. Mm-hmm. Drones. Drones. Yeah, fire drones. <laughs> oh, God. Who's this? Who's this little gremlin back here? He's gonna burn it. 
<laughs> like, just you wait. Your, your time has come. <laughs> End of the line, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Sick of your stuff, goat. <laughs> is this is this the Yule goat? This yeah. Is, yeah, yeah. This is. I just I, drew. I, yeah. I just drew a goat that I liked. <laughs> I yeah, I like goat. it too. You drew a goat that I like also. That's great. <laughs> Oh, so cute. You can see the children are already frightened, but the, the children parents, yeah, they don't like it. The parents loving it. Same same thing to a greater degree with this this pick here. Oh, wow. Okay. Run, run kids, run. run. <laughs> the, the dog the dog is flipped out. The dog doesn't know. And again, the, the adults in the room are The dog just... is attacking. <laughs> Get him, dog. I like this. And then uh, I do have one pick of the uh, goats burning. <laughs> yes. Wow, yeah. It's huge. God. It's made of straw. What do you want? Like, you can protect it all you want, but it's like, you know, we put this pile of matches in the shape of an animal. Yeah, maybe stop making it so easily flammable. They tried. If that's the problem. They, like, soaked it in water, put it, soaked it in ice, and it, it's, it's still, like, burnt, it's still made out of straw. Yeah, don't use straw. <laughs> it's a notoriously flammable it's substance. Not a, <laughs> and it's not a yule goat. I came close. I drew, like, yeah. an actual anthro goat. But I think yeah. he's cute. I love it. Because I have good taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all love the anthro goat. <laughs> The audience agrees. We love the anthro goat. All right, it's my turn. I want to draw one. Okay, Jacob, Please. are you ready? Yes. Okay, Jacob, your holiday folklore character, Barbagazi. Okay. Barbagazi. It sounds like a soda. Sounds like a fun time. Yeah. It's a, it sounds like there'll be a lot of like Senate hearings about this for the next eight years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that Charlie Daniels say, says that Barbagazis ain't going away. Um, so uh, Barbagazi are winter gnomes. Gnomes. That are technically not associated with uh, Christmas or any other holiday that I know of, but they do only appear in the winter months. And I and I read up on them, and I thought they were very good, so I I decided to go with it. A winter gnome. Oh. Telling you that they're a gnome is already like way too much information, so I'm just gonna keep going. They have uh, frozen beards. Ooh, oh. like the movie. It's in the shape of Elsa's face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's it's a beard that looks like Olaf. <laughs> <laughs> It it's talks a, in his voice. It's alive. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> How would you feel if your facial hair was voiced by Josh Gad? Oh my god! <laughs> no, thank you. I just put I if I put my be, set my beard on fire and light the Yule goat with it. <laughs> yeah, you just set your beard on fire and run at the Yule goat. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't see it coming, I guess. <laughs> no, certainly um, not. <laughs> uh, so I, I will say you might have to do a little bit of adjustments here because one of the major aspects of the, the Barbagazi is they have gigantic flat feet, which oh. they use to uh, ski down the mountains. <laughs> and they also use them to burrow their massive network of tunnels under the snow. Yeah, they do. Okay. <laughs> They got little shovel feet. Yeah. Oh, got gosh. little, little Their skis and ski shovels. Mm -hmm. Little ski duck ass shovels. ski feet. <laughs> I don't know how that would work. Like, I guess, again, I understand, like, if you had shovels for yeah. hands, it'd be like a mole. But, like, how do you do that with feet? Yeah, that feels like you don't have enough, like, ankle strength to make that motion. That feels inconvenient. What you would do is you would get on all fours and kind of walk backwards. Into it, <laughs> like you would go into the ground ass first. <laughs> the burrow. <laughs> you can't see where you're going. It's just, it's just faith. Yeah, neither can, neither can moles. You know what I mean? That's true. <laughs> yeah, they don't need to. <laughs> not where we're going. <laughs> these, these gnome, this gnome not have hands. Uh, not yet. Okay. There's still time. Okay. I'm kind of more trying to nail down this sort of he's he's running really fast, mm -hmm. I think. I don't know why. Is he would you say he's Naruto running really fast? Is it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do they need arms if they have shovel feet? There's not I no, there's nothing in the rule book that says they have arms. So So yeah, why even bother? <laughs> Since you brought it up, Tristan, no. <laughs> no, he does not have arms. 
Yeah, is there like some lore here? Like, what do yeah. they do? So they they uh, obviously they live in the mountains. They hibernate during the the spring and summer, and during the winter months. So usually forces of good. There's an avalanche. They will uh, kind of like warn people by by hooting. By, okay, that's what he's doing. He's hooting. <laughs> Although, although I do wonder if the hooting is causing the avalanches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they also use their feet to like uh, help people who are stuck in avalanches. Oh, oh that's helpful. kind. And they scoop them right out there. They're trying their best. And um, they also uh, sometimes will light fires to help oh. people find their way back home. Oh. And it, you know, if there's a Yule coat, you know, on the way home, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, you got to burn it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those the rules. I love the idea of this winter gnome like doing something very helpful, holding the torch, lighting another light, and being like, haha, another soul, and just turns around and sees the eagle goat, and it's just like, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this, uh, I think this, uh, the Barbagazi are from both Swiss and French mythology. So if there's, there's ever uh, another like, French uh, Pokemon game. I feel like this is like a, a Galarian like ice cream Pokemon version, oh, you know? yeah. I love it's got like a, like almost like a sleeve of uh, of beard, a scarf. It's like flapping in the breeze. Yeah, it's ice, but it still flaps in the breeze. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't ask. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's Christmas magic, shut up. Yeah, it's Christmas magic. What's your problem? Hallmark, where's this Christmas movie? <laughs> <laughs> Where's this Christmas Bar- magic? Is, this, movie? is the Barbagazi the hunk in this Christmas yeah, movie? Yeah, look at him. Because I feel like that goat was definitely like eligible to be a hunk for sure. Yeah, I did give him very human proportions. <laughs> we didn't establish if these dudes speak, so I, I do love to they imagine hoot. that. In, yeah, in this, they only hoot. So in this hoots. Hallmark movie, he just hoots the entire Ooh. time, every line. A series of hoots. This might be a difficult uh, creature to romance because um, in one one article I read, it said that if they're very private beings and if you try to follow them back into one of their homes, they will throw you off a cliff. Oh. oh. They're emotionally unavailable. <laughs> <gasps> I can like fix me. him. <laughs> <laughs> How do I, I break the ice? I love a project. <laughs> Yeah, that's the name of the movie, Breaking the Ice. <laughs> a real cliffhanger of a movie. Ooh. And the Yule Goat is the secondary hunk. It's like the city hunk that, you know, yeah. that oh they have to Yeah, leave look behind. at him. <laughs> okay, but this lady this lady enters the town and her first impression is she sees someone she sees him throw someone off a cliff and she's like, Wow, what a bad boy. <laughs> and then but then sees him do some good charity work, like rescue people with his yeah. feet and and light <laughs> candles to help people come home. And she's like, oh, but he also, good guy. <gasps> the heart wants what it wants. <laughs> the duality of this man. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the Barbagazi just runs around screaming and doing whatever with his feet constantly. <laughs> totally, completely unaware that there's a romantic comedy going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, Hallmark, uh, can we pitch something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just got a little idea brewing here. I think mm-hmm. I think you might like it. So I think in this direction, uh-huh. fire. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's running towards the fire. Yeah. Presumably, if we're going with like the ongoing lore here, mm-hmm. uh, they, mm-hmm. they got Karina's goat. It's like... Uh, <laughs> You know, whenever whenever you see a, a Yule goat burning, look for the helpers. You know, look for the helpers, and you'll see. Yeah, look a, for the helpers. Uh, you'll see. A Listen barbagazi. for the for the <laughs> yelling. <laughs> but then coming from this way, what's that? Avalanche. <laughs> oh, so he's gonna put he's gonna put out the Yule goat with the avalanche. Yeah, avalanche is is coming down this way, kind of you know destroying like the trees. Oh my god, there's trees in it. Rushing down the mountain, mm-hmm. you see. I see. This is the woods. <laughs> <laughs> this is the woods. It's unclear if he's trying to help or escape or warn. Mm-hmm. 
It's really a, it's a Rorschach test for sure. Yeah. I like to imagine that they don't have any sort of conception of what they're doing. This is just <laughs> yeah, what they do. Yeah, this might all just be an accident. Yeah. We're, we're placing onto them like what we think they're doing. Mm-hmm. But that's not them. They just run around screaming and kicking things with shovel feet. And wearing and wearing overalls, I guess. Yeah, and wearing little o- cute little overalls. <laughs> this is this is the moon. <laughs> Got it. That really helps with scale. Dark I appreciate night. that. It's really a beautiful night, except yeah. for the avalanche and the raging and the inferno. Raging f- fire near the forest. <laughs> yeah, these things happen, you know. But thankfully, the Barbagazi is here. Mm-hmm. Thankfully. All right, I'm done. It's right, time for me. Oh, well, we got we to gotta look up the Barbagazi first. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, calm down, uh, Julia. Pump, I got excited. Brakes, Julia. Oh. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's so radical. <laughs> this one looks very big. So are this trees is like. To wow, it? he does look huge. This is Rob yeah. Leefield's number one enemy. Where's the moon in this picture <laughs> for scale? <laughs> Why is it so big? I thought they were gnomes. <laughs> they they are. It's supposed to be like one foot tall and five pounds. Five pounds. My cats are heavier than that. <laughs> Look, I'm just I'm just telling you what the internet said, and I have to believe them. Get your shit Most together, things internet. Things are heavier than that. <laughs> this this thing looks a lot more like self possessed. Like this this gnome knows what it's doing. Yeah, you can tell from his eyes. Yeah. It is it is hooting more cl- uh, clear very clearly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he looks like he's going somewhere with purpose and reason, unlike mine. Sticking his hands out to be the most aerodynamic possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is an athlete. Yeah. Wow, I really got the whole vibe wrong. <laughs> They're not in a constant panic. I am charmed by yours. Well, that's something. We'll we'll take that. <laughs> that's a victory. Uh, okay, should we get Julia in? Yeah. All right. Tristan. What? What? Hi. Tristan. Who's this? Hello? Lore Librarian. Oh, Lore Librarian. Wow, so nice to meet you. I never have before. We're That's... finally in the same room together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. We should take a picture. Maybe later. Oh, well, okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anyway, uh, I have to go. Oh, okay. Bye. Wow, you just oh, just left wow, like Lord that. Wow, Lord Librarian just ran out of here, huh? That yeah, the <laughs> really weird, so weird. Uh, wow. speech pattern and timing on Lord Librarian. I never, <laughs> never really noticed before. Okay, so Julia, do you still want to do this? Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, okay. you know, I think I can, I can squeeze in a drawing. Okay. All right, Julia. <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, you had you drew a very memorable drawing of Grilla, the evil Christmas witch. Yes. But now you have Bafana, the good Christmas witch. Oh. Yay. Okay. She's Italian. Uh, okay. An old okay. woman who, who's uh, very much like Santa and a little bit like uh, our previous uh, Yule Goat in that uh, she delivers uh, uh, gifts to good little children uh, in, uh, in, in, that, in a similar fashion. So... The interesting bit about her is that there are also a couple of different um, interpretations, I guess you could say. Most of them are good. That's why I mentioned that she's a good Christmas witch. If she, you know, if you're good, you get candy. If you're bad, you get coal or like garlic or onions. And like, you know, as an adult, like I'm like, oh God, I actually really need, if you could pop out to the store, you know, (laughs) just like if I could just do something shitty real quick and just get some garlic and onions delivered to me. That'd be great. She's an essential worker, I think. That's yeah. how I would describe the fauna for sure. <laughs> Bless her. It's interesting because uh, she does fly around on a broom, but she she's also reportedly, in many uh, many sources I saw, a good housekeeper, and she sweep, she will sweep up your home uh, while, while wow. she's there. Oh, my God. That's so nice. She does. She is a bit of a, a bit of a wine, a wine grandma because like, you're supposed to leave out like red wine for her. So I imagine like she's pretty buzzed after <laughs> like like a million homes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So she's just drunk and cleaning your house and throwing garlic oh my around. God, the best. I'm getting a lovely Streganana vibe here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's she's flying on a broom. Mm-hmm. So I gotta have some. Some billowing hair here. Does she battle the evil Christmas witch? 
Ooh, are the girls fighting? Uh, well, I think are the they related? Christmas Witch was um, Icelandic, if I'm if I'm remembering oh. correctly. And Bafana is is Italy, so they have different territory. Okay. Mm. Have, so, but if a, they met, agreement. yeah, if they met, Grilla would s- slice her throat, probably. <laughs> 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 Just being trying to be real, uh, but I mean, I was going to get to this later, as as there is usually. For these characters, there's a, a part of them that is sort of like acts as a deterrent for kids. You know, if you're bad, you get a lump of coal or, or whatever. But uh, one of one of the two aspects I, I read about her is um, if you're bad or if you uh, find her in the night, if you're a kid and you wake up and you see Bifana, uh, she'll whack you in the in the face with her <laughs> broom. Oh. Um, Don't look at me. (laughs) Don't. Go away. I haven't done my hair yet. I haven't done it today. I've been too busy Uh, going to the store for everyone. You know, she's had had a few thousand glasses of wine. Yeah. And (laughs) she doesn't know what's what. Uh, And I... It's thought that you know you don't want kids like getting up in the middle of the night to look for Bifana, so that's so you threaten them with violence. Exactly, and the other the other part, even worse, uh, an even worse threat is that (gasps) Bifana supposedly has a uh, husband who eats children. So if you're really bad, she steals you and gives them to her husband. Good lord, relationship (laughs) goals. Yeah. Yeah, dang. <laughs> when Bay brings you snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she knew going into the marriage that he eats children, or did that like come to light later? It'd be a wonderful like... combo. Listen, I don't want the good kids. You take the bad ones. <laughs> I'll bring you the bad ones. Together, we're a good disciplinary parent, I think. I don't know. How does this work? I don't want to be seen. <laughs> if they see me, they gotta go in the tummy. <laughs> not my tummy, though. I'm not a monster. I just married one. <laughs> She's got her slippies on. She's got her slippies on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're gonna fall off. No. No, it's magic. She's yeah. a grandma. They always keep that stuff on. Yeah, that is her. <laughs> unless, unless they want to throw it at you. But That's otherwise. true. That's true. I really get the vibe that like it's an ongoing problem in her marriage that she gets drunk and goes out at night <laughs> and like disappears for long stretches of time and no one knows what she's doing. And the, and the husband's like, oh, Bafana, come on. You did, you can't keep going. I brought you a child. Oh, well, okay. Well. All right. <laughs> yeah, he puts up with it for that reason. <laughs> no, I brought you more children. Okay. God. Oh, God. I got to draw. Okay. I got to draw a straight line. A long straight line. There we go. Yeah. I did it. Magic. There we go. She wearing like a bathrobe? Yeah, I think she's wearing like a little a little sweater, you know, keep her warm. Sure. The wine will do that. In Italy, do they also have Santa as well? Or is this like the replacement for Santa? Drunk grandma. I, I, I think they do have Santa, but Bifana is actually, this is according to, to Wikipedia, so I'm not sure. I didn't read enough on this, but she appears on Epiphany Eve, the night of January 5th. Oh. Okay. I, I didn't have enough time to look up the holiday of Epiphany, but it is a, a, a Christian feast day in uh, January. It celebrates Jesus. It seems, uh, seems like there's a little bit of crossover there <laughs> between. Uh, so she comes later. Yeah, she shows up late. Yeah. With ten thousand cups of wine. <laughs> <laughs> she was busy pre gaming. <laughs> She's gotta have like a little a little bag, maybe like a little purse full of what was it, garlic and onions? Children. Children wine. wine. Just from what I'm reading, it looks like Epiphany can sometimes uh involve like <laughs> Christmas time running from January twenty fifth to January twenty sixth in some places. So I guess oh, I'm sorry. This is not important compared to the child in her knapsack here. <laughs> He's so small. Sad little Caillou in there. <laughs> okay. Caillou, no. I was uh, I was about to feel bad for any other child other than that little. It's okay. Little. It's Caillou. Yeah, Caillou exactly. had it coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is making me laugh. <laughs> it's Christmas time. Time for drunk grandma. <laughs> drunk grandma's coming. 
I'll take all your nasty little Cayus off your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Are you being a nasty little Cayu this year? Uh, I'm taking you with me. You just look like Cayu, so you're coming. You're coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, did you look at me? <laughs> <laughs> you know the rule. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> I'm shaving your head and throwing you in my bag. <laughs> this is fun. I like her. Yeah, she's great. I love this. I love this tradition or cryptid. She's just dr- she is <laughs> drinking and flying. <laughs> Like at the same time. <laughs> oh, it's fine. She does this every year. Oh, uh, yeah. I just She's love that cool. it's like definitely apparent. Like the grandma came over every year and was like, listen, uh, no, she, she doesn't have a problem. She's a uh, magic. <laughs> she stopped by all the other houses to deliver. Uh, uh, what, what do you. Hey, Grandma, what do you have in your bag? Garlic. Garlic, <laughs> Garlic yes. <laughs> Were you planning to cook tonight? What? What's the deal? Classic mm. purse things. <laughs> I just like to have a snack. <laughs> Don't you know that keeping garlic in your bag keeps your bag from smelling bad? What? My purse garlic. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she's probably not running into a lot of like air traffic. Yeah. So it's fine to, you know, have a few thousand glasses of wine. What if she was flying. flying high enough that it was like in air traffic? Like there were airplanes, commercial airplanes. Mm-hmm. Airplanes are so far away from each other is the thing. But, you know. There's a lot of air up there. She's just having a good time. She might lose track and fly that high. Yeah, but you'd have to really mess up to get close enough to an airplane with all that space. You see how much space is up there? It just keeps going. Garlic is falling out of her out of her bag, little cloves. This one's gonna be a hole. <laughs> this is the part where I, I wonder if I'm sp- saying Bafana wrong. It's B E F A N A. Is it like Bafana? Bafana Fofana? I mean, it would be Bafana in Italian. Okay. How do you? I know? took Italian in college. Oh, 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 okay. Ooh, Jacob, you're so cultured. Yeah, I'm pretty cultured. <laughs> <laughs> He says wearing his Smite (laughs) t-shirt. Got him. Tristan, you promised you wouldn't bring it up. (laughs) It got cut out of the last episode. It'll get cut out of this one too. Unless. Um, I think I I, did. I hit all I hit all the notes. I think. I think these are. Yeah, this is wonderful. Julia, this is so fun. Thank yeah, what you. a nice drawing. I'd love her to be specifically my grandma so that she yeah. doesn't feed me to her husband, it's grandpa. not concerning at all. Well, you're not a child anymore, so I think you're safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're in the clear. So I've got uh, a couple pictures here. Here's here's one. Oh. Yeah, that's an old oh, woman on a broom. Sweet. Yeah. She's got some toys. She kind of looks a little witchy. Yeah, a little wall-eyed. Well, she, she is a witch. <laughs> <laughs> kind of has that drunk look about her. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I've got, I, apparently I learned that um, in it, the, the Italy section of Epcot, there is a costumed uh, Bifana at Disney World. Oh. Here, now here she is from a YouTube video. Ooh. Oh. This is whimsical. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. How nice. It's yelling at me, I think. <laughs> she just gets drunk and goes to Disneyland. You know, it's very relatable. Yeah, she's not employed by them. <laughs> she brings her own microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're afraid to tell her to leave. Epcot's the only part of Disney World that lets you drink. Survive <laughs> here. That's not true. Sampling the wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's what they told me. When I flew in, uh, they said something about just keeping it in this area. Well, Tristan, thank you for bringing us. I'm ignoring Grandma. What? You can't ignore me. Tristan, I'm thank you, you for husband. bringing us these beautiful cryptid, holiday cryptid yeah. creations. Thank you for bringing them to life in such a, a wonderful way. It's a honored tradition here on mm-hmm. the Droppy program. Mm-hmm. I hope we do it for decades to come. So long. Oh, no. So long. So too long. That's <laughs> depressing. I, to, to, say, to, to say time will continue for decades more is troubling to me. Yeah, it is a bit troubling. We'll do it one more year and then we'll see where we're at. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Optimistic, but all right, let's, go, let's shoot for it. But thanks for watching. If you like this episode, do the like click, 
Do mm-hmm. the subscribe click. Do the go to patreon.com slash drawfee click and you can give us money if you really like it. Yeah. That sounds good. And Tristan, where can the people find you? Oh, you can just find me at uh, right now on Twitter at Tristan A. Cooper and also my other Twitter account about video games and dogs at Can You Pet the Dog. Yeah, nice. go follow. Yeah. And as always, we're sorry. 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 I'm sorry. Just the one talking. Say one more garlic. <laughs>